Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. This time around, we're going to be doing this fancy dancer here with all this kind of glimmering light and stuff. Pretty straightforward if you know a couple of tricks to do this. Let's go ahead and see how this whole thing is done. Let me just get rid of this one. There we go. Now, I'll start off with just this straight photograph, and you can get this photo. There's a link for this on the video support page for this project. Now we need to first, what I always do is to create a backup copy of this. I'm just going to pull it up there, make a new layer, and hide the original. That way if I mess up, I can always go back to my original right there and it's already in the file. So I always do that as a habit. We now need to make a very careful selection around the whole figure. And this is the longest part of the whole project and I'm not going to take the time to show you this whole selection process. I'll just describe it quickly and I'll get on to the rest of the project. I've talked about how to do these selections in lots of other projects. So I won't take the time on this one to show you that whole process. But basically what I do is I'll zoom in very tight like this, use the polygonal lasso tool and make a careful selection around the whole figure except for around the hair. I'll do just the head part of this. You can see this process. And then I'll bring up the regular file, the save selection. So I'll just go around and I'll make a real careful selection like this around the whole figure. And I'll take my time doing it. This is, again, this is the most important part of the whole process is to do a good selection. So this is where you should be spending your time. With a good selection, you can do almost anything else that you want. So go ahead and take the time for this. And then around the hair, I'll just come out just a little ways around the hair. And when you're using the polygonal lasso tool, don't click too fast or it's going to collapse the selection. So just take your time. Hold the space bar down to move the picture. And then continue making your selections. Now around the back of the hair, I don't care about those little wispy things back there. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this selection in rather tight on the hair for the back side. And then I would complete this process clear around the whole figure. And let's just finish this up. And again, I'll do just the head part for this little demo here on this. So again, I take it around and do the whole figure. I'm going to take this down now and just bring it back down here and kind of collapse the selection there. Just assume we have the rest of the figure done. And let me just stretch that up a little bit so you can see our settings. So I have feathering at one pixel. I normally do that. And for little spots like in here, just go to subtract and come in here and just make a little opening there. Don't be too careful about this except around the neck. Leave a little bit of space. So you have just a basic selection with just this one spot on the picture kind of wide. Everything else is going to be in real tight to the figure, but just this one spot left wide because this is a good time and a good spot to use the Refine Edge tool right there. Here's our Refine Edge. Now leave all these settings alone and let's come in here and just kind of paint right along the edge like that. And you can use your wheel on your mouse to scroll and that will fix those little edges along the hair. When you're done, just go ahead and save this out as a new layer with Layer Mask. Okay, now I'm going to cancel that and let's just deselect that. I've already done all of those steps. So I'll back out a little bit here. There we go. And I'll get on to the rest of the important part of this. So I've already done all that stuff and I've saved that selection. So I can then just load my selection, which is right there. And there it is. There's the whole image selected. I did the refined edge up here. I cut out those parts using subtract from selection for inside the arms and there's the selection. Now when you do save for a layer layer mask what you'll get is this with a layer mask. I can just go ahead and add that here by clicking on the layer mask button and that's what you'll end up with. 
Now we need to do a little adjustment right down here. There's a bit of this bushy stuff showing on her skirt. I just want to get rid of that bushy stuff. So let's zoom in. And this is just straight clone stamp tool stuff. It doesn't need to be very fancy on this. It's not really going to show in this image that much because there's so much else happening. But let's just clean up as much as we can. The trickiest part is actually right in here. This is pretty easy. So let's do the easy stuff first. Make sure you're on the image side. Look for that light blue outline. If you don't see it, double click over on your image side. I'm going to make a selection. This is kind of a line of the edge of the skirt right there. I'm going to make a selection right along that line of where that skirt is. And we'll do everything above that line first. And there we go. So I'll do this area and then we'll do the stuff below second. And I'll be using the clone stamp tool. And the size I have on this is just dock that 35 pixels. That's pretty good. I'm just going to grab some of this stuff. Now it's kind of dark down here, so I can go over here and grab some dark in here possibly, or a little bit of this for down here. It doesn't really matter as long as it's similar. And let's just put a bit of this darkness in here like that. I'm using this because it has a bit of this stuff on the top, so it's kind of darker below and lighter on the top, and it looks similar. And the reason why I'm doing it against the edge here is that this way I can have a really good match to that edge. It'd be a nice, nice clean edge down there. Okay, that's that part. That's easy to do, as I said. Deselect. Let's now do the exact same thing bottom side of this. Then we'll do that leg right there. I'm going to use just this one leg. I'm going to hide that other leg. So let's make a new selection. And I'm going to come across the across the top the same spot we did before up here just like that and then right down along the bottom edge and just kind of bring someone to take this right over here right up against that leg and let's bring it up leg edge and double click and collapse that. Okay, now I need to have something dark in here. There's a lot of stuff to choose from, but I'm just going to fill this with black and then put a little bit of texture on top of that to make it blend in nicely. So let's go to our paintbrush and black and let's set this at about oh 40 or so. And I'll just paint black in there. There we go. And then let's clone stamp just a little bit of stuff from up in here. A little bit of texture like that. Just a few things. And I'm going to then darken this down right here and use the burn tool. And mine's at 85. And I'm just going to come over this and darken that down. So I just want it dark, but I want a little bit of texture in there. So there we go. Okay. Let's just deselect that. There's a little bit right there, but I'm not going to even bother with that. If you want, you can go ahead and fix that little little spot. Let's take a look at this leg. There are a couple things in here. There's the back leg in here. I want to get rid of that. I want to clean this angle up right here and then get rid of all the all this stuff. Now, to hide these parts out here, that's done on the layer mask. So click on the layer mask. Make sure you see that light blue outline and then we're going to be make, making another selection right along here and just kind of follow down that leg shape and out here and we'll fill this with black so just the paintbrush and paint it with black and that goes away then deselect this side same thing and just make a selection like this and just kind of clean up that edge right there and paintbrush and like that okay now we can try to hide this now again this is tricky so you have to work top down real slow and get larger as you go so this is all clone stamp tool and I'll start where that little little nick is right there I'll choose that spot and I'll come down a bit and just kind of clone stamp and make sure of course you're on the image there we go And let's just 
kind of repeat that just a little bit and then let's see if we can hide a bit of stuff. Now it's tricky here because there's very little space to work with on this. Let me bring the size down a bit. Luckily it's not that critical on this on this image after everything is all said and done. You won't really be seeing what's going on down here. That's kind of the saving grace on this little part of this because this is pretty tricky to fix this area. See so what I did? I came in and I fixed the top stuff reasonably well. And now I'm just grabbing it and just pulling it straight down. So I'm selecting and pulling it straight down, select and pull straight down, select straight down. Again, no one's going to be looking at this, so we're going to be okay here. Let's see if we can copy a little bit of this lightness up here down out of the edge. Okay, good enough. You can blur this out a little bit if you want to. Go over here to the blur tool and just you know do a little bit of this just to kind of soften up any little edges in there. Let's just back out. But again once you're out here no one's even going to be taking any attention to that so we'll be okay on that bit. Alright now let's get into the fun stuff. So we have our image in here, and it's sitting on a layer all by itself. If you're not able to float your window like this, just go up here to Edit, Preferences, General, and make sure that these two are checked. Allow Floating Documents and Enable Floating Document Window Docking. Choose OK. Then you can float it, or you can just drag it up here and dock it like that, or drag it down to float it. So let's now make a copy of this layer. So take our layer, drag it up here to copy the layer. Let's pull that underneath. This is going to be our first effects layer. And let's go up here to Filter and Filter Gallery. And you want the Glowing Edges, which is under Stylize. So it's like that, Stylize, Glowing Edges. And the settings I've used are 7 for the Edge Width, 8 for the Edge Brightness, and 12 for the Smoothness. Choose OK. And that gives you this kind of a thing in here. Now it's in behind, obviously. We can't really see that. So let's do a little bit more work. Come down to our bottom layer. Make a new layer above that. Let's fill this layer with black. There we go. Back up to our effects layer. Right there. Now, at this point, we can actually collapse this layer, and collapse the layer mask onto this layer. So right click on this and choose simplify layer. And so what happens is it actually collapses that layer mask down and makes it just a solid layer. Now I can grab my control handles and pull these out just a little bit on either side. So we're now beginning to see that effect in there. And then come just outside and rotate that around a little bit. There we go. And using the cursor keys on your keyboard, just kind of move that back a bit. So you see a little bit of the edge in here, a little bit of the edge in there, a little edge around here. And you can play around with that to get just the effect that you want, just the right amount of glow showing around the image. That's pretty good. Just a little bit of glow in there and choose OK. OK, so far, so good. Now we're going to be doing a little bit of work with, with this, just a little more work. I want to change my blending mode on this thing and we're going to be doing a blending mode here called pin light and that just makes everything else all, all the darker stuff just kind of go away and leaves does the real bright stuff so it does that for us that's pretty good and we'll put an adjustment layer above this one as well so layer new adjustment layer levels and use previous layer to create clipping mask just to make that sure that's selected here we go now here I just want to accentuate the brightness just kind of bring this left side over a bit like that and you can bring this middle one over a little bit look down here begin to see a little bit of color happening in there have it so that just begins to show just a bit there we go and that just brightens the whole thing up you can bring the black in a little bit if you want to but this will just brighten everything up kind of moving the stuff from the right side over towards the left 
The settings I have here are 1, 1 1.84, and 1.79. And it gives us that real kind of nice bright glow. Okay, that's the first of our glow effects. Let's now go back up to our original layer, drag it up here to a new layer button, just like that, so it's above here. Let's reapply that same exact filter on this layer. So filter, filter gallery, that's the stylize and glowing edge. Leave all these settings the same, edge width 7, edge brightness 8, smoothness at 12, choose OK. So that's sitting on top. Do the same thing, let's collapse this down by right clicking and simplify layer. There we go, and that gives us that effect on top of that image. And then I want to blend this into the layer below, so go up here to our blending modes and choose screen. So you now see the layer underneath kind of showing through. That gives us that glowing effect on there. So there's that blending mode. Now there's one more thing I want to do on this one. I want to hide the effects in here on the face. So I'm going to reapply the layer mask. So there, there's a reason why I did the reason why I removed it and then reapplied it. That's to give you the right effect. So come down here, click on this layer mask. Make sure you see that light blue outline. Hold the Alt key down and just drag straight up. And that copies that layer mask up to here. Now go up to this layer mask. Make sure you see that light blue outline. Black paint. Grab your paintbrush. And then just paint right around over the face and over the hair in there. Maybe a little bit down below the chin. And that brings her face back in full so you can see her face. Okay, we're getting there. That looks good. This layer looks okay. These all look fine. Now I want to increase the values, the saturation here of this layer back to our original layer. So let's add another adjustment layer on top of this one. So layer, adjustment layer, levels again. And make sure it says use with previous layer to create clipping mask. Make sure that's checked. Choose OK. And now on this one, I'll be bringing the black up. Now the setting I had for this one is 43 on the black, kind of richens the blacks up. And on the midtones, put this at 1.29. And then on the highlights, it's 225. And there we go. That gives that kind of a nice glowing effect in here. So there's the image, the girl taking care of with a nice glowing effect. Now we need to do our background stuff in behind this effect in here. So for that, come down to the black layer, drag this up to the new layer button. There we go, it's a new layer. We're now going to apply a lens flare onto this. I'll, I want one in here behind the shoulder, right down over here on the right side, and right down over here on the left side. So three of these lens flares, we'll do them one at a time. Filter, render, lens flare, and what I'm using here is the Movie Prime, and I have mine set at 150%. Now, you can't see where this is on the image. They so have to kind of eyeball this. So if I'm looking here, it's about the top quarter, and it's just about in the middle, a little bit to the left of middle. So let's bring this up to the top quarter. It's about here. There's the middle, a little bit to the left of middle. So about there's about right. Choose OK. And I got that really close. That's pretty good. Now, if it's not quite exact, just use the arrow keys on your keyboard and kind of tap it in. I want that right on the shoulder there. Now, when you do this kind of a move, notice the outline up here. Notice that the image is now moved. It's offset. And you can kind of see it here. There's now transparency in behind that background area. Now, on the left side, it's OK. I just need to fill that left side with black. So just grab the paint bucket and you can just click right up against that edge and it fills that with black. Actually fills up here as well. But notice get a dark line right there. I don't want that dark line. So two ways to fix that. Either move the image up or simply grab this and stretch it up until it it goes away. That'll be pretty close. Alright, here's our first one. Now this needs to blend with the layers underneath of it. So on this layer change the blending mode to screen. That's going to hide all the black part and everything else will show through. Okay, same exact thing again down here. Grab the black layer up to the new layer button. Back to our render and lens flare. 
This time I want this right over here somewhere. So it's just below center. Here's our center line. There's a little center bit just below center. And it's about a little more than a third of the way in from the right hand side. So there's center, about low from center, about a third of the way. So it'll be right about in here someplace. Shoes okay. And that's pretty darn close. It's a little bit too far to the right. So again, I can move that in using the cursor keys on my keyboard. I'll just move that in like that. And then grab this edge and pull it out a little bit so it fits. And you can just keep on adjusting that until it's exactly where you want to. Or you can even just, you know, try it again. But that's that's just fine. Choose OK. So there's that second one. OK, third one is going to be right down here. So back to the black layer, drag it up to the new layer button. There we go. Same exact thing. Filter, render, lens flare. This time it's down here. It's about, well, here's half, there's quarter. So it's a little bit, little bit below quarter and it's about a third of the way in the left hand side. So let's just figure this out. There's about halfway. It's about quarter. That's about a third of the way in. So right around in here somewhere. Choose OK. Let's go back up to this layer here, and I need to, need to blend this down, of course. Let's change that blending mode to screen. We can now see this one down below. And there we go. There's our three highlights in there. Let's just now expand this up and see how this looks. And I think that's pretty good. So there it is. Under the kind of fancy effect. Now the variations on this, if you want to, would be mostly in the levels in here. You can adjust your levels to control the look of these outlines. If you want to, you can make another one have you know double outlines. And a lot you can do with this. I think I'm gonna try to punch the colors in here a little bit. Or maybe even up here. So it's a bit too soft in there. And this is kind of coming in from this layer up here. So let's do a little bit of a tweak on that one. Again the layers and levels is a way to do this. Make sure you clip it to that one layer. And let's see if we can darken that down. There we go. That's what I want. Just kind of darken that level down. Notice how we're, we're, we're seeing this, this kind of blotchy stuff. If I pull this over, that just makes everything on that layer go dark. We're now seeing this layer underneath. And that's what I want right in there. That looks great. So this little tweak on this was 102 and 1 and 255. These are the same. And then just 102 right there. So a little tweak and I think we've got it perfect. So there we go. That's how to do this kind of uh, glowing effect in here. Kind of a fancy little, little image effect. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 